Hello, Switch Peeps. How are you guys doing today? Yes. Hi, Daddy. How are you doing? I'm doing good. It's good to be back. Um, yeah. Got a little break there. Yeah. Um, how And how are you? Oh, I'm so doing great, yes. And uh, really uh, anxious to, to finish this part, yes, 150 idioms with you and uh, yes one more amazing day with you yeah. <laughs> yes yeah and we're we're getting kicked off with work and uh the the sun's coming out well we've had the sun but it's starting to warm up a little bit and so summer's coming and your guys this fall is coming to you so we're yeah. coming spring you are in fall so yeah, it's crazy, yeah. Um, yeah. but I'm excited to get this one done and on the books so people could learn all the idioms they can. <laughs> all right, yeah. okay, yeah. So, uh, native speakers, you guys love using phrasal verbs, you love using advanced adjectives and love use uh, idioms yes so now you're going to learn 150 common idioms actually it's a sequence of 150 and the native speakers love use it so throughout this section you're going to see the idiom you're going to understand the meaning and you see some example sentence, and you see a picture to really help you remember this idiom. Let's get started well, what, with the 121, because the 120, we already, it's already done, yes? In the, oh, the yes. <laughs> this is our last one. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so take a rain check. Yeah, so yeah, we, we say take a rain check is if you can't make it that day, um, you would get a rain check by the other person or you'd give them a rain check and say, let's make a plan for another time. Um, and stores actually still do that. Um, if they have a sale going on, and you want to buy it, and they're out of the item that you are trying to buy on that item, they will give you a rain check. Um, so you can come back when they do have the item and get it still on the, the sale price. So yeah, it's just something that someone writes up and to advance it to another day. Go ahead. Oh, that's interesting, yes. So to take a rain check, this is when you decline an invitation by suggesting uh, you accept that invitation at a future time. So not now, but later. Let's say somebody invites me to lunch today, but I'm very busy. I could say... I'd love to have lunch, but I need to take a rain check. Which means not today, but later. Yes, next step. Uh, number 122, to go beyond a wild, or to go or to be on a wild goose chase. Someone that sends you on something like uh, to go pick something up at the store. Like, can you go pick up, um, say, a lighter or uh, some eggs or something? Or something that's not common. And so you go to the store and they don't have it. So you have to go to another store and then another store and none of them have it. That That's what we would say a wild goose chase. Is you you're constantly you're searching for it and you can't find it, so you're constantly going to other places to store to store to store. But yeah, um, 
that's been around for a while. And so go ahead, Sal. Oh, well, great. So yes, to go on a wild goose chase or to be on a wild goose chase. You can use both verbs, go or be. This is when you are looking for something specific, but uh, it's a complete waste of time because uh, something specific doesn't exist. For example, after hiking for five hours, we realized we were on a wild goose chase because the waterfall doesn't exist. So you were looking for a specific waterfall, but on the trail, we were, we realized that it were not a waterfall. The waterfall is a, in a different location. So that is to be on a wild goose chase because we are looking for something that doesn't exist. Yes. Next, Betty. All right, number 123, to twist your arm. You forgot your arm part on it. You twist my arm, oh. to twist your arm. So that would be if someone is trying to get you to do something either uh, that you don't want to do, we say, man, you got, why do you got to twist my arm to, you know? Hey, we go to the store, no, and then you start saying, "Well, this, that, and the other," and you're like, "Man, I got. Why do you got to twist my arm?" <laughs> it's like just yeah. turning, basically just saying. My arm. But we always say, uh, like, if, for instance, um, "Hey, do you want some cake?" And then we'd be like, "Man, why do you got to twist my arm?" All right, I'll take some cake. It'll just be because. Yeah. Yeah, funny, you know. Oh, I didn't know. Yes. Yeah. That's that way. We would say it backwards a lot, just to make it fun. Because of course we want cake, right? Mm -hmm. So we just say, "Man, why do you got to twist my arm?" So, all right, I'll take some cake. So yeah, go ahead. Oh, good jazz. So, uh, to to twist, yes. This to is twist when an arm. To twist, uh, twist yes. yeah. someone's arm. This is when uh, when you persuade someone to do something that they don't want to do. The example here, I didn't want to go to the party, but Sarah twisted my arm. So Sarah persuaded me, convinced me to go to the party. Yes? Yeah. Next, Betty. Number 124, to face the music, to uh, face judgment, basically, or, yeah, um, you, you would say, well, you could either beat around the bush or go face the music. So you can just go tell them what's happening, or you can wait until they figure it out. Like, we used to say that with our parents. You should probably go just face the music and go tell them what you did because they're going to find out eventually. So either wait until they find out on their own or tell them yourself, which it was always better to tell them yourself, but it was so hard to do. But, yeah, just basically getting it over with to face the music. Go ahead. So, so amazing then. Yes, to face the music. This is when you accept criticism or punishment for something you did. Uh, for example, I missed the deadline. So now it's time to face the music. Now I have to lead with my boss. We both know I missed the deadline. It was wrong, so I'm going to be punished, and I deserve it. It's time to face the music. Next. 
from mm -hmm. number 125 to hit the books. When you have to go study for school, we'd say, well, I better go hit the books. Or if you're studying um, for a for something for work, um, like a meeting or something, well, I better go hit the books. So yeah, that's all. Oh, great. Great example, Zez. So to hit the books, this means to study or to do homework. Example, I can't go to the party tonight. I need to hit the books. Next, Daddy. Well, number 126, to turn a deaf ear. By just, uh, you say, you say that when you um, are wanting to ignore somebody or to not hear what they have to say because it could get you in trouble by knowing what they're saying. No. Uh, so yeah, just to say, I, I need to turn a deaf ear. So I don't want to hear it. Don't need to hear it. I don't want to hear the gossip or, you know, don't need to know it. So go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yes. Great, yes. To turn a deaf ear, this is when you ignore someone when they complain or they ask for help. The example here, I asked Maria to extend the deadline, but she turned a deaf ear. So when I asked her to extend the deadline, I was asking her to help me, but she ignored me. She turned a deaf ear. Yes. Next, Daddy. Number 127. To break the bank. That's when you that's when you um spend all your money in the account and uh you now have broke the bank. You spent all your money. Um, we would say that like when uh, we go out to dinner and I look at the menu and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is going to break the bank because it's so expensive. So yeah, that's what when we would use it. Go ahead, Saul. Oh, great, Jess. Probably I did that. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> to break the bank. Yes, this means uh, cause financial ruin. For example, this vacation costs $5,000. It's expensive, but it won't break the bank. It won't cause financial ruin. Yes. Hmm. Next, Ben. Number 128 to jump the gun, to get ahead of everybody else is to jump the gun. Um, because like on races, you guys use a gun too to start. Uh -huh. That's your starting um, signal. So yeah, so okay. by jumping ahead of everybody else is to jump the gun. Um, we would say that like, if you got too far ahead of something and you're like whoa 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 you, you need to slow down you jump the gun you're too far ahead so uh -huh. yeah yeah go ahead song oh good yes great example so to jump the gun this is when you do something too soon uh, without thinking about it carefully example here the company jumped the gun when they canceled the conference so they made the that decision too soon they should have thought about it more time and then decided it next that number 129 so uh this one's like to read between the lines <laughs> We used to do that and say, read between the lines when you're, and it was another way of flipping someone off, but in a good way. You get it? No. You do? Yes, for sure. Okay. 
So yeah, read between the lines. Um, when you're explaining something, but you don't want to say certain things, and you tell them, uh -huh. read between the lines. You know, like that's like, you know, our boss is a great boss. You know, type thing. You know, you're you're you got to read between the lines on that one. By emphasizing it, uh, you need to read between the lines. And so, you, you good? Yes, yeah, amazing. Go ahead. Okay, great. Great examples. Yes, so to read between the lines, this means uh, when you try to understand somebody's real feelings or intentions based on what they said or they wrote. For example, here, she said she's happy, but if you read between the lines, it's obvious she's upset. So you try to interpret what she's saying to really understand how she feels. Yes, next to that. Mm, number 130. Through thick and thin. This is like when um, we were kids and we we're going to be best friends through thick and thin. Uh, or your parents would say, man, you guys are. Oh, no, that was a different one. Thick as thieves or. I don't know. I really don't know what that one actually always meant through thick and thin. Um, but I just know it was like, you, you'd be friends through thick and thin. You, we will go through it, everything together through thick and thin. So it was no uh, through the problems or not. So basically the ups and downs of life is what it's consisting of. Go ahead, Saul. Great, great example. Yes, so to thick and thin, this means when you support someone or stay with someone, even when there are problems or difficulties. Example here, a true friend will be there for you through thick and thin. If there are problems or difficulties, a true friend will be there. Yeah. Next. Yeah, it's number thirty one thirty one to go back to square one to start all over again. What a bummer. Um. Yeah. <laughs> back to square one. I do not like going back to square one. Like that job um that we had to do on Monday and Tuesday. We had to do it twice because. It was two lifts, so you pave it once, and then start all over again, and pave it all over again. And never really like to do that. So, but yeah, go back to square one to start over to redo. Go ahead, Tom. Yes, great. So to go back to square one, this is when you start working on a plan from the beginning because your previous attempt failed. For example here, the board didn't approve our project or our, our plan. So we have to go back to square one. We have to start again from the beginning. Yes? Next. Number 132, from scratch. Uh, well, this is like the other one to start over from scratch. Uh, basically, you got to tear everything down and start again. Um, or you could say, we built this, we built this car from scratch. Uh, we built this cake from scratch. Uh, so we built it from nothing. And we didn't buy it already made. We made it from scratch. So go ahead, Saul. Can't hear you. Amazing. 
I had amazing examples, yes, from scratch. Yes, this, this from the very beginning. Example here, I started this YouTube channel, for example. My family started this business from scratch. So when you is we started there was nothing we did everything ourselves from scratch next daddy number 133 to shoot one's foot you forgot the foot part to shoot your own foot as we would say is to basically tell you tell on yourself or to do something that caused your own demise or your own problem uh, or get fired because you did something stupid or said something stupid. That is calling shooting yourself in, in your own foot. So don't shoot yourself in your own foot. And go ahead, Saw. Yeah, it's amazing. Yes. So, good examples to shoot ones. Uh, to shoot oneself in the foot. This is when you say or do something that could cause problems for you. Example, I shot myself in the foot when I agreed to stay late tonight. So I said yes when my boss asked me to stay late, but it's my cousin's birthday. So now I can't go to their party or I'm going to be late and I'm going to be in trouble. I shot myself in the foot. Number 134, right off the bat. Uh, so we would say that like if you were to uh, be doing something and of course everything fails right off the bat. Uh, we run out of gas right off the bat. So right at the beginning of something, um, something either bad happens or something good happens. It doesn't have to be bad always. But usually you bring it up when it's bad. <clears throat> like I was just getting ready to do something and right off the bat, somebody shows up and makes me so I can't finish my project. But yeah, go ahead, Saul. Oh, great, Chess. Right off the bat, Chess, this means at the very beginning or immediately. Example, you can accept to feel confident speaking right off the bat. So you immediately, every, uh, from the very beginning, when it started, that is uh, right off the bat. You can't expect to feel confident right off the bat. Yes, next, then. Uh, number 135. In the bag. Um, I don't know what you're trying to get with this one. In the bag. Certain certain to be one. Oh, okay. I got this one in the bag. Yeah, like for sure that you're going to make the shot or you know you got this. When you say, I got this in the bag. I got this. So yeah, go ahead, Saul. No, oh, great, Chad. So in the bag, uh, it, this is when something certain to be won, achieved or obtained. Example here, Jane has the promotion in the bag. So even though they haven't formally announced that Jane has a promotion, it's certain that it's hers. She has it in the bag. Next. 
Number 136, hot air. That's usually when someone's just blowing smoke up your rear or uh, they don't know what they're talking about. You got a lot of hot air up in your head. Um, storytellers, fake people. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they got hot air in their head. They're dumb. Yep. Go ahead, Saw. Great hot air. This is a great one. This is when something is not sincere and you will not have a practical results. For example, the advertisement claimed I would lose 20 pounds in 20 days, but it was all hot air. <laughs> it was not true. Oh, yes, yes. Where you live, there are a lot of balloons like that, too. <laughs> yes, we have a lot of those air, hot air balloons here. They have braces sometimes. Um, and you'll see like 30, 40 of them going through the air, maybe even more. And the sky will be full of them. And it looks pretty cool. And they can get down low. And uh, actually, we were able to talk to some of them as they flew over top of us. It was pretty cool. Oh, uh huh. Yeah. Have Have you already done? No. No, I've never been in one. No, I don't know if I can. Do you Do you know how much is that? Uh, I do not. I've never tried asking. I just don't know if I could stand in a wicker basket that high up in the air and be comfortable. Yes, yes. You're standing in grass or dried grass. <laughs> <laughs> Tree limbs. Better to feel comfortable. Right? Yeah, I mean, I would, I guess, I don't know. I don't know if I could do it. Mm -hmm. it. This doesn't seem okay. When I was um, there and we were, it was our first hotel place uh, where we stayed. Um, and I stood out on the balcony and it was, it was little balcony. I could barely re look over the edge. It uh, was uncomfortable. Uh -huh. Yeah, heights to me are no good no more. I used to love them when I was a kid, but can't do it. Uh huh. All yes. right. I would like. <laughs> yeah, you like that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yes, yes. Of course, I'd probably to do it. feel safe, no? I would probably do it with you. I would just have to sit down and not look over the edge. Yes, yes. But there are a lot of things to do instead of that. Oh, there's all kinds of things to do. Yes. But of course, that would be cool. That would be one thing to go on the books. Uh -huh. On the books. You say that when you put it away. It's one for the books. It's all done. No. Uh -huh. Yeah. You write a story about it. You can do whatever you want. But it's noted that we've done it. Oh, yes. Good, good. That is a good one. Yeah. So number 137, to follow in one's footsteps. And just like the picture shows, your children always follow your footsteps. So uh, if you are doing some stupid stuff. Your children are going to follow you. And they're probably going to do stupid stuff too. Um, so yeah, try to be a good example. So the people that are following in your footsteps follow in a good example as well. Go ahead and talk. Yes, for sure. So, uh, parents, no? leaders and it's uh, a good one so yes uh, to follow in one's footsteps this is when you do the same thing that someone else previously did and that someone else is usually a family member a friend or a mentor the example here she followed in her father's footsteps and became an engineer. This means 
that her father is also an engineer. Yes. Okay, next. To call a spade a square. So basically calling a circle a square or just blatantly lying about something or calling it something what it isn't. Blatantly just, nope, no, that's not a circle. That's a square for sure. And it's actually a circle. So yeah, you're, uh, No, that, that's not how you put it on there. It's it's to tell the truth about something, even if it is not polite or pleasant. I don't remember ever it being that meant that, but to call a spade. So many, so many idioms. Oh, even to, if, even I, if to call a spade a spade, to call it out, yes. I don't know what I was reading there, darling. Sorry. That was my mistake. Um, that's because <laughs> a spade shovel and a square shovel to me. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking that in my head. Uh -huh. So yeah, I was completely wrong. So yeah, just to call somebody out. Uh, yeah, they, a spade is a spade. It's a good one that you mentioned. It's a good one too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is a good one. Um, but yeah, to just call call someone out, call it as it is. You you're lying, and I'm gonna call you out on it. So yeah, go ahead. So yes, great, great. So to call a spade a spade, this is when you tell the truth about something, even if the truth is not pleasant and not polite. For example, here. Let's call a spade a spade. This company discriminates against women. So that's not a very polite thing to say, but it's the truth. Next. Number 139, to be in the same boat. This is when you're both going through the same problem. Like during the COVID, we were all in the same boat. We all had to deal with the same crap um, of uh -huh. the COVID. And of course, what COVID caused after it was done, it has ruined a lot of things. Nothing's the same anymore. Everything changed ever since COVID came along. And that was because of our stupid government. Um, they're evil people, so they're going to do what they do and and cause problems. So we're all in the same boat there, too. We can't get away from it. They think we're mindless jellyfish. Well, we'll see what happens later on down the road, huh? Go ahead, Saw. Uh huh. Yes. Yeah, so to be in the same boat, this is when you're in the same situation as someone else, and that situation is difficult. The example: we both lost money in the stock market, so we're in the same boat. Next. Step. Good. Yeah, 140, to pick one's brain. This is to, uh, I actually said this just the other day, uh, to learn something that somebody else knows. So I would want to pick their brain to learn everything they got to teach me. Um, so like, I, I like to work with machinery and I met a guy that knows how to do it. And I asked if I could come help clean up the shop or whatever, just to pick his brain. So to learn what he knows. So go ahead, Saul. Yes, good. So to pick one's brain, this is when someone has a lot of information on the subject or topic. And you ask them to share that information 
or you ask them for their opinion. You pick their brain. For example, I'd love to buy you a coffee and pick your brain sometime, which means I'd love to buy you coffee and find out what you know, ask you questions about what you know or get your opinion on a specific topic based on your knowledge. Yes. Next. To bounce an idea off someone. So to throw an idea at someone, um, to see what you think. Hey, let me let me bounce an idea off you. And so that would be like, hey, let me say, uh, tell you my idea. And 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 what do you think about it? So that's bouncing it off of them because you're you're pitching an idea to someone and then they're gonna tell you how they feel about it. And that's that's why it's called bouncing because then it comes back at you. So yeah, go ahead, so huh? No great chance to bounce an idea of someone. Good examples. It's always no. <laughs> this is when you share an idea to get feedback on that idea. The example here, can I bounce a few ideas of you before the meeting today? Yes, next day. Number 142, the devil's in the details. You know, I never really understood this one. Um, <laughs> yeah, I never really, never really, did. Something may seem simple, but the detail are are complicated and may cause problems. Pay attention. <laughs> Whoa. Yes, pay attention. Something may seem simple. And that's that the funny thing about that is is oops, I lost you guys there. Sometimes I think things are going to be a lot easier than they are or go faster than they are when I'm working on something in my own shop. And it turns out everything always has a problem when I go to do it. Um, either a bolt doesn't want to loosen up or my saw doesn't want to work or something. There's always a problem and it causes something that should only take an hour to do. It makes it take three hours to do almost every time i try to do something oh that's easy i can do that quick nope it never happens go ahead saw yes that's good so uh the devils in the details so uh this is when is used when something seems simple but the details are complicated and could cause and could cause problems. The example: the contract is only one page, which seems simple, but the devils in the details. So, in that one page, there's a lot of complicated information that could cause problems. Yes. Next, Daddy. Number 143, the pot calling the kettle black. So we use that one for when someone's calling someone a liar, but the other person's just as bad of a liar as they are. So basically, you're, you're calling out somebody on something, but yet you are the same way. Uh, or calling out a thief a thief, but you're, you're the thief too. Yeah. So you'd be like, well, isn't that the uh, the pot kettle calling the kettle black? So yeah, you can't be calling somebody else out when you're doing the same thing. So go ahead, so. Oh, amazing, yes. Great examples, the pot calling the kettle black. This is used to say that someone shouldn't criticize someone else for a fault they, that they have in themselves let's say jack is always late and uh, i get through this the the meeting five minutes late 
and Jack gets mad at me for being late, but he's always late. So I could say, I, uh, I can't believe Jack was mad, uh, mad because I was five minutes late. Talk about the pot calling the kettle black. Next, Betty. Number 144, to take a back seat. So you'd say that, yeah, when someone's trying to uh, to try to run the, the show or and you come up and say, all right, it's my turn. to You just take a back seat. I'll take over. Um, I'll take over the lead position. You need to go take a back seat. Um, there's one that was kind of like this. I don't know if you have it in there, but back seat drivers, you know, <laughs> people telling you how to drive and they're sitting in the back of the car. That was funny, but it just reminded me of that. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, usually. Um, so, yeah, when someone's want to take over and you tell them, all right, you go take a back seat. I'm going to take over. Go ahead, Saul. Great. Yes, to take a back seat. This means when you choose uh, to not have a responsibility in a organization or an activity. The example, my team is organizing a conference, but I'm taking a back seat. I'm not going to be responsible for the conference. Yes, next, Betty. Number 145, to be up for grabs. Uh, so like, like normally when you put cookies or something out, just put it on the counter or on the table, that's up for grabs, right? So yeah, when... Um, you put something out there for everyone it's it's up for grabs uh you can even put yourself out there for for uh to be up for grabs for you know other companies or businesses or uh, or position in your company but yeah or the business um um uh, a position is up for grabs and so everyone's got to work harder to try to get that position. So yeah, up for grabs, just something for everyone to be able to work for or to grab, to get. Go ahead, So. Oh, amazing. Yes, so, so to, to be up for grabs. This is a great one. Is used when something is available and ready to be won or taken. The example here, do you know if Sue's office is up for grabs? So Sue's office is now empty. Maybe she left the company or she changed offices. So is her office ready and available? Is it up for grabs? Yeah. And the next, Daddy. Number 146 to put something on ice, uh, to basically tell someone to chill out, to to uh, put it away and hold it for later, or um, to put something on ice. I don't know. Go ahead, Saw. I can't believe this one right now. Oh, yeah. Oh, OK. So uh, you don't have any idea, yes, about that one? No, I got I to gotta look it up. Um, this one came at me at a little... It just no, okay. brain's broken. Yes, Go to put talk. something on ice. Yes. To put something on ice. This is when you delay something or you deserve something for future use. Let's put the conference on ice until the summer. Yes. Next, Daddy. Number 147, to bite off more than you can chew. So yeah, to take on something way more than you you think you can take on. Um, like, you're like, yeah, I can handle painting the whole house. And then, um, 
and then you get started and you realize I can't do this um, by a certain deadline or just being doing it by yourself. So that's biting off more than you can chew because it caused you to joke. But go ahead, song. Oh, great, yes. Uh -huh. So to bite off more than you can chew. Yes, this is when you try to do something that is too difficult for you. The example, we took on three projects this month. I think we bit off more than we can chew. So three projects, is it's too difficult for us. Okay. Next, Betty. Number 148, the throw caution to the wind. To do something without worry. Yeah. To just go for it. Don't don't cares, no cares in the world. Um, we don't care about the caution. Something we, we used to do when we were kids. We didn't care about what would happen or the repercussions. We just throw caution in the wind and do it. So yeah, go ahead, Saul. No, great, yes. Great example. So to throw caution to the wind, this is when you do something without worrying about the risk or the negative consequences. The example here, I wasn't happy at my job, so I threw caution to the wind and I quit. So I didn't think about the negative consequences when I made that decision. I threw caution to the wind. Next, Daddy. Number 149, a cross to bear. I don't know. Oh, to bear the cross. Yes. I think it's kind of put backwards. Yeah. Um, to carry someone's load. I would say, right? An unpleasant or painful situation. Um, okay, yeah, so it's different than what I thought. Uh -huh. Yeah, so you just want to carry the, the load um, to be able to handle that load. Go ahead, Saw. I don't know how to go with that one. No, okay, yes. <laughs> Sorry. I could share a beforehand with you. I did it. Mm -hmm. Yes, so a cross to bear. This is an unpleasant or a painful situation or a person that you have to accept, even though it's very difficult for you to do so. For example, I lost our company's biggest client, and that's my cross to bear. So that's a very painful situation, knowing that I was personally responsible for this loss, but that's my cross to bear. I have to accept it and deal with that, even though it's painful. Next. That was the Five last years. one. Number 150, that last one, to keep yeah. an eye on someone or something. That's what we would say. I'm watching you to keep an eye on you. Yeah, we'd say that when someone is a little iffy or they keep making mistakes or doing something stupid. Go ahead, Sal. Yes, so to keep one's eye on something, some, uh, so this is when watch uh, or takes care of something or someone. The example, will you keep your eye on the project while I'm at the conference? Will you take care of the project? Will you watch the project while I'm at the conference. 
Okay. So you're doing such an amazing job thinking of everything you learned so far. Now I know that last section was a big one. And uh, in the next day, we study something else. And uh, that one is smaller. And you're going to learn the most common advanced medical vocabulary that you need because we all need to know medical vocabulary. So let's get started in the next class. This section. Oh, we're doing... Thank you to our tourists. Well, yes, make sure you guys subscribe and it's good to have you all back here and hope to see you on the next class. So excited to learn these medical... I don't even know where we're going with this one yet. So it's a surprise for me also. Hopefully I can explain what I know if I know these words. So we'll see you next time. Good night and have a good evening. Bye-bye. Yes, yes. So bye-bye. And But don't forget to subscribe in our channel. We need you and you need to know your opinions to bring to you uh, something that it it's interesting and useful to you learn and uh, let us know so we can prepare something beforehand to you. And uh, yes, share our channel, share our videos with somebody else who needs to learn English and just uh, see you in the next class. Thank you for watching us and bye-bye uh, for now. Bye-bye.